Alright folks, today we are going to avoid making that Calyx OS video that I promised, and we're going to be talking about chemicals in the water. And hopefully this video isn't deprioritized for any reason, and I'll, I'll explain why. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, I'm a history buff with mild autism. Joking aside, a couple years ago I had a health problem. Actually, it started many years ago, like uh, seven, eight, ten years ago maybe, and for about 18 months I just felt cold all the time and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And one day it just went away, and then about four years ago it came back, and I just felt miserable, weak, tired. I was a six foot one soilet, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And finally one day I just went on the internet and I read on forums what could be causing me to have this problem. And a lot of websites said, oh, you have hypothyroidism. And so I looked into causes and it didn't take me anywhere. And finally I found just a health food blog that said, if you have too much fluoride, it will make it difficult for iodine to stay in your system. I never salted my food, so I wasn't getting enough iodine or salt. And I was always drinking tap water. From the time I was in college, the only kind of water that I drank was tap. So what I did was, I started incorporating iodine into my diet, and I stopped drinking tap water. And Monique, if you do pop in to view this video, you're right. Today we're going to be talking about a water filtration system that will remove fluoride from the water. Some of the stuff in here is on other kinds of prepper and homesteading channels, and some people will talk about something like a Berkey water filter. This is a lower cost alternative, and I'll throw up on the screen just kind of a breakdown of the cost of this versus a Berkey filter so that you can understand what I've done here to make things a little bit different, and then also you'll understand the trade-offs as we go through the video. For this recipe, if you will, you need two Food safe buckets. These ones came from Lowe's. Lowe's started carrying food grade buckets. You can see it has this yellow sticker on the side, yellow and black, and it says that it's food grade. These are also really awesome if you want to store grains or beans or anything like that long term, especially if you have like a honeybill nearby. I think that store is run by the Mormons and it's really cool. There's a lot of bulk dried storage there. The other thing you'll need is black filters. These are knockoff Berkey filters. This is the first. The first trade-off you're going to have is that these plastic buckets, they are not as stylish or good-looking as the Berkey buckets. The advantage is they're five-gallon buckets instead of three-gallon buckets, or three-gallon containers. So you're going to be able to store more water in something like this. The second thing is these black knockoff Berkey filters. Berkey systems are actually considered water purifiers. They will remove bacteria. These will not. These are made in China. Really basic water filters, or not really basic, they remove all physical particulates, or most of the physical particulates. A lot of people will comment, oh, they're great, they filter faster than the Berkey. Yeah, they filter faster, but not as well. I'm going to be using tap water, so it's relatively sterile. So I'm not too worried about bacteria, and even if, you know, something were to happen, there's other ways that you can purify water. You can put bleach in it, which, yeah, it doesn't get rid of Giardia, or you can put this the water in the sun in a clear container and it will purify itself. So I'm not too worried about sterilizing the water. Boiling is another good option. The important part of this though is these fluoride filters. And I didn't trust the knockoff fluoride filters. I got the Berkey ones. These are supposed to remove 97% of all fluoride from your water. And I've heard that these Berkey, these knockoff Berkey black filters flow a little too fast. And we'll get into, and we'll cause these to backflow, but we'll get into kind of the engineering on, on why this might actually work out even though those filters filter too fast and how I'm hoping that they'll slow down. Of course, we need our Teflon tape. This is just to prevent our threaded piping from leaking. We have two of these three quarter inch, you could really use most sizes, but rubber washers. That way we have something on the outside and the inside of the container to minimize leaking from that angle. So we'll have 
Both of these blocking water from passing through. We'll have the Teflon tape in between also helping. And then finally, I have a hose nozzle. I used to like drinking out of a hose when I was a kid. Really, the reason I got this was I couldn't find any kind of nicer looking nozzle for a food grade water container. But it's made out of brass and it's lead free, so it should be safe for drinking water. Inside, I actually put another rubber washer. That way, when this meets up with the PVC pipe, which is on the inside, I already have one of the rubber washers on here, the top of the PVC pipe will go into the rubber washer to, again, minimize any kind of water that gets past this water seal and the Teflon tape. This piece of PVC was quite a bit longer. I trimmed it down because I want this as flush with the side of the container as possible without risking structural integrity of the PVC. And I cut that with PVC cutters. This comes in handy. I do a little bit of martial arts and sometimes we use these just for fake sticks so that we don't hurt each other. I have a knife for unpacking. A power drill. This is for drilling holes. And this process requires three holes. One is three quarter inch because I got three quarter inch outer diameter PVC threaded. And this is three eighths inch. The three eighths inch is important because it matches up with the black filters. That's the width here. It's a pretty tight fit, but it should do. And these knockoff black filters do made up with the fluoride filters. I actually did a little bit of a fit test right before this, just by popping that out and then unpackaging the end right here. Now you've already seen, or you are seeing right now, the process of drilling the holes in the container. The first part, the first hole that I drilled in these containers was in the base container where the water hose fitting is going to go. And you have that hole right there. What I'm going to do on video is I'm going to take this piece of PVC and I'm going to show you how I get this through. It's a really, really tight fit, which is nice because, again, it's going to help minimize the amount of water that can leak through. This takes a bit of angling and a bit of force to get that thread started. And I'm just going to twist this on all the way through until this is assembled. And that is a really, really tight fit. It does not feel like it's going anywhere. This hole is almost completely addressed. I'm just going to wrap a little bit of Teflon tape around it and then put the second fitting on in. That was a mistake. That's okay. This is probably sloppier than I should be putting the Teflon tape on, but I dropped it. <laughs> good enough, we can let that go away. Now we're going to put our second rubber washer along the outside of the container. I probably should have done this first before the Teflon tape, to be honest. But it looks like the Teflon tape is still in place, which is a-okay by me. Now I want this rubber washer in, on here as flush as humanly possible so that we get that proper mating of the inside of this hose fitting and the rubber washer that is inside of it. Can I get one more twist out of it? Now oh, this is really tight. I think that's going to have to do because the rubber washer out here is starting to wrap around it which means that it's not going to do much of anything. So maybe I need to skip that one entirely. Oh, okay, I get it. The PVC on the inside is starting to twist. Good. That should be good enough to be watertight, at least with the water pressures that we're dealing with here. The other two holes, as I mentioned, there were three holes. 
There's two in the bottom of this container, and there are two in the top of this lid. These holes line up. They're not perfectly measured. They do line up so that the water filters will go through. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the water filters in now. This is a test fitting phase. I have not actually primed these quite yet. All right, so that couldn't go all the way through because there's this wing nut on here. I probably should have checked beforehand, but that side actually does check out. It, it will actually go all the way through, no problem. And then I'm going to test fit the other hole. I'll make sure using the same water filter that everything will go in. This time, because I removed the wing nut, I can test that this will actually screw all the way down and allow that rubber gasket to engage. Yep, and it's really tight. One of the things that you can do with this filtration system is you can, and you can see right there, I can hold it completely sideways and it's not going anywhere. With this filtration system, if you want to put a whole bunch of these carbon filters in, you can. It will extend the lifetime of each. But at the filtration rate, I'm sure that I won't have any problems getting enough water, just based on my daily usage. I go through a little over a gallon a day, but you know, I'm a little bit of a larger guy. I probably go through a gallon and a quart per day, something like something along those lines. Just with cooking and, and drinking water and tea and coffee, I drink a lot of coffee. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and prime these water filters. And there's probably videos all over the internet on how to do that. I haven't actually watched any of them yet, so I'm not sure how it's done. Uh, but I'm going to prime these water filters and the fluoride filters. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the bread food dye test to show that this works. All right, there's going to be some echo here because we're in my kitchen, but I'm going to do the red food dye test. We have two jars set up underneath. Yes, they have a green tint to them. And I made a mistake. I accidentally left one of the wing nuts on while I was screwing one of them on, and so I lost a chunk of threading. But because this is so tight, when I did a test, it didn't look like this broken filter was leaking. I had to put a slightly different rubber washer on it so that I can get the extension I need for the fluoride filter. But I'm going to pause the video right now, and for those of you who don't know, the red food dye test is one tablespoon of red food dye in one gallon of water. Put in slightly less than a teaspoon, but this is also slightly less than a gallon of water. These are two and a half gallon tanks. So one gallon, half a gallon, two gallons, roughly with my measurements. I'm gonna pour this in and we will see how well this works. All right, and it's filtering through right now after priming. That looks pretty clear to me. I don't see any pink at all. So I think that means that my threading is still holding. I'm gonna put a rubber washer in front of the fluoride filter just to make sure that there is no leakage between those two. Probably a really, really small one, um, but I won't be able to get the full eight full turns on the fluoride filter. According to Berkey, if you go more than eight full turns, you could damage your equipment. Now, one of the things that I mentioned earlier is the engineering flaw or the potential flaw of a seal between the lid and the bottom bucket and how these filters flowing too fast and creating an overflow might interact in an engineering perspective. Or I might not have mentioned the seal on the bucket, but these filters going too fast, some people on the internet were complaining that their cheap filters were actually causing problems where they were backflowing over the fluoride filters. Because this lid is going to seal on top, I think it will probably restrict the flow enough. And I built a makeshift aquarium filter in college using five gallon food grade buckets, just like this, these ones right here. And the problem that I had with it was that if the pump ever went out, these do not seal airtight. They don't even seal watertight. So when any kind of pressure is applied to them, they will start to leak. Not super fast, but they do actually leak air and water. So there is quite a bit of risk there as far as 
uh, homemade aquarium filter is concerned, but with this, I think it might restrict the airflow just enough to slow these filters down so that they don't cause any kind of problems with the fluoride filters, but at the same time, restrict the airflow enough that they operate similarly to what you would expect the Berkey filters to operate as. I think this down here is pretty satisfactory. If you can see any kind of pink in there, it's not from my lens adjusting color. As you can see, there's some pink back here with the tile. If you can see any pink in the water, please let me know in the comments down below. These filters look pretty good. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach the fluoride filters to the bottom of these filters. Everything's been primed and is ready to go. And then I'm going to plug these two buckets together and get to filtering. Thanks for stopping by. This is Nick, signing out.